Planet Fitness' best deal ever. Super free. Super free. Get your first month free. No enrollment, then only $10 a month. Your first month free, yeah. Get moving in our clean and spacious clubs with your first month free. No enrollment, cancel any time. This one-time deal ends tomorrow. Uh, as of uh, last week, I guess, and uh, the week before, uh, when it's sort of been uh, in between guests that I've been uh, picking up for the show here, uh, trying to keep away from the the big C talk, not talk, talking about cancer, but the other one that's been sort of plaguing us for the last year, because it uh, seems to be with uh, YouTube uh, talks or opinions about this matter and uh, discussions about this, which should be uh, properly legal and properly reasonable. Uh, seem to get stripes, so we uh, we're gonna avoid that for now. And uh, I don't know. And then uh, other things in the news. Uh, I actually for the past sort of week uh, since the last time, I really haven't been following the news too much at all because well, I have been following it, but not watching it as in tightly or intently as I normally do because it seems to be the same old lip service with uh, more lockdowns here in Canada. Uh, stricter protocols that uh, the world is basically ending. We've got to shut down things. And then you look at the stuff that's happening in the States. It seems to be improving in the warmer areas, but other areas, not so much. And whatever the situation is going on that with that, with that government in the, the U S which uh, does uh, indirectly and directly affect uh, Canadian uh, uh, trade and uh, uh, probably in decisions, stuff like that and travel it, uh, that doesn't seem to be changing too much at all. So uh, what else was a, so over this time, I, I've been watching a lot of uh, old podcasts, uh, not just from this uh, network, but uh, older stuff from uh, the paranormal old coast to coast stuff, interviews, uh, lots of old uh, Howard Stern interviews uh, with uh, band members and stuff like that, that sort of break up the monotony of uh, that. And just, but really uh looking into uh, more things that we've been discussing here on the paranormal, on the delicious recipe here, uh, dealing with uh, uh, little people, ghosts, extraterrestrials, Bigfoot, uh, all the weird stuff like that. And these are all things that uh, I'm asking for your stories of uh, events there. You can send them there to, there to uh, delicious stories at gmail.com and uh, add your stories there. I'll keep your name there private and confidential and uh add them to uh, my site that I have there on Facebook, which is uh, uh, the delicious recipe and, uh, with the delicious stories. And uh, I'll post them on there. I'll keep your, like I said, keep your name private and that'll change around names or whatever, unless you want your name to be known and stuff like that. And just a fun little thing to add for stories and that, that uh, some things that have occurred in your life with uh, weird events, uh, things you might've saw. And uh, just by having these stories and putting them out there, you'll see that maybe other people will see stories of this that had similar things and make this uh, big, big world a little bit smaller. So um, other than that, for uh, weird stories, uh, Laura, you've been uh, checking out that uh, Nukes Top 5. Uh, that's just, uh, one of the channels that we uh, we check out stories there and which we've said before is really interesting because he doesn't give an opinion on whether or not these things are true, hoaxes or whatever allows you to sort of uh, make up your mind. And uh, one of the very first uh, stories that was on the one that came out uh, last week, and this is why I find this so amazing about when you watch all these channels uh, that are posted on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and that with uh, all these paranormal channels. And there's millions upon millions of them in millions of different languages. And you really start, you look at them and you wonder about how much of these could be sort of fake. And this really, this first story, which was, was sort of interesting, is that it was this one about this uh, uh, stroller with a baby that died out in the woods. And uh, I guess the baby died out there and it was by a tree and there was a bell hung up there. And then if the bell rings or if the strollers moved. Uh, no, if you wake the baby. This was actually from this week. He didn't yeah. put a video up for two weeks. It was in Italy. He's featured this Italian paranormal team before many times. And what it was, the lore about this is in some forbidden forest. They didn't say in Italy, but somewhere in Europe. And nobody knows what happened. But deep in the woods, there's an old type of stroller. Or some people may call it a pram. And there's a bell hung over top. And the story goes, if you wake the baby, 
there is a very dangerous evil entity that will take it out on you basically if you do sorry i wanted to just give a little bit of lead in so what happened all you can share it was pretty yeah so the interesting thing that i sort of was the one thing that sort of stood out there about this uh the stroller and it was uh nicely painted blue it was still looking pretty pristine uh the white fabric that was in there for being out in the in the forest was uh still pretty nice and cleanly white white and like clean looking it doesn't look like anything that i've left out in the backyard for two days that gets covered in dirt and dust and rain and that so that was sort of a little bit interesting and then this sort of bell that was over there that once they touched the the, the stroller this little bell sort of tingled and that and uh they got all worried and i always find it interesting is how when people are filming this stuff to make and i i go back to always thinking about the the movie the blair witch uh project and uh the first one and how people tried to make it sort of all jerky and moving around with their cameras but everybody always seems to be in the center of frame and the camera never seems to be pointing at something that that they're looking at what did you what did you think about that one there with the nice clean stroller Okay, so yeah, I had a problem with that. But the reason why I had more respect for this team is because I've seen them featured numerous times on his channel. And the reason I like this channel and suggest Noob's Top 5 is I find he's a bit of a skeptic himself. He never tells you what to believe, like you said, but he is also, I've seen him debunk certain things that people claim to be paranormal. He will also always just give you the evidence, see what you think. So had this been the first time I saw them, yeah, I would have been calling fake, absolutely. But he's got a pretty trained eye. Like he will, he'll take some noise out of the audio if there's a supposed EVP. He's used different techniques in shadowing and shading, and he'll show you if there's something there. Now, the one thing that got me was apparently the head of the team. There was a woman and a man, Luca, I think his name was. And like I said, we've seen these, this team before. They're called PIT, Paranormal Investigation Team. They're now doing their channel on YouTube in English and Italian. But he provoked the spirit and he was hanging on to the stroller. And he's saying, oh, my God, something feels like it's pulling it, like it's pulling it away before the bell rang. You didn't see any evidence of that. But what really got me was they used a flare. So there should have been something showing up, I would think, on this flare, because it usually does pick up, and I understand it's a heat signature type um, camera, but uh, it usually will pick up some sort of entity, usually, if it shows up. So I have to call as well as you. Like, again, I'm even going to play devil's advocate. We don't know where it was in the forest. There was a lot of trees. Maybe it was well shaded. And that's why, but still doesn't make sense to me because this is supposedly some legend and lore. So it's been out there for more than a week. It's been out there for, you know, it sounds like decades. Yeah. It definitely didn't look decades old. And even what I found suspect was they, one of them says, oh my gosh, I've seen something because there's subtitles. So it was in Italian and it looks like this woman racing across in the forest. It, it just looked a little, a little questionable to me. Little, yeah. The, and, and this is what it comes into with uh, a lot of these videos and some of them do them a, a little bit better which i sort of would have to sort of raise my eyebrows to like mm -hmm. thinking that well this might be actually a, a possibility because i've seen some other ones that look that are pretty uh uh convincing or, okay. or give you a, a sort of like well that this could possibly be a thing like there was one that was a couple uh weeks ago with this i think it was in uh, russia and like, I was investigating an old farmhouse. And as he was coming around uh, uh, the building, you can hear a noise moving around in this part of this uh, concrete building. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though I was expecting to see something come out the door, and uh, even when I, and I watched it like about five times, it still gave like the hair, hairs on my, on my back of my neck jumped yeah, up. That was scary. Mm -hmm. and all, it, all it was is, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of, uh, spoiler alert, it was the, a cow. And, oh, uh, the cow! We watched that one. Yeah, but, it was but the way he was sort of walking and with the cameras, he's moving and he's focusing towards the doorway. And this head of this cow that was sort of down—it looked like some sort of 
being or whatever floating halfway through the the opening of the door mm -hmm. and the cow's head is sort of turned and you don't really catch on what it because is you don't expect to see a cow there either it wasn't like farmland or anything well i think like there was that. a farm like about uh as he said uh, or it was written in the description was like a couple of miles away so i guess it was an errant cow that had sort of escaped it was this in, deserted <laughs> building mm -hmm. and gone through this building and that was sort of like uh that was interesting but he had also set up cameras and this is one thing that i want to say about uh parts about people that like how with this deep part that i'm just going to debunk on this area is that if this uh, uh italian team had set up a standalone camera far away and was filming them around in the area of where they were standing as they're jerking around their individual handheld cameras because you don't know if there was another person on the team ringing a bell behind them or uh another person that was running through the bush to, and the, to make it look like uh the woman and stuff like that, like they no pictures of the surrounding as they're being in there, sort of like it, it makes you sort of question things a little bit more, right? Because you're not seeing the whole scene, you're seeing little snippets and jerks. Yeah, and that's what I want to add is this team has been featured before with not questionable evidence. I've seen some pretty spooky, creepy under tunnel, underground tunnel stuff that they've run into. But the other thing is that I like about Nuke's top five he tells you where to find the whole video. He'll tell you if it's been sped up for caught for for time, if it's just a like a clip or what. So uh, to be fair, you'd almost have to watch the whole investigation. This is just a tiny snippet of their investigation, right? Yep, yep, that's true. Yep, and that was uh that was uh, the the first one that was on was on that one, and so. That was just one part about investigations and we've noticed this a lot on other teams or other channels that have been on there about the way things are being filmed and i can understand if i if i was a uh well i am a skeptic of a lot of this stuff but i i do believe that there's some uh, truth to this is i don't know how provable it is until you catch one in a in a can or a bottle or something like that that everybody can come in uh witness and see uh you're not going to really know about that or tr catch it in some sort of energy field it's sort of a uh, video is has a hard it's a, such a hard thing there now to use as factual evidence because the thing like uh i think it was about uh a couple years ago when we when we, we were doing this cameras for at the house for setting up there we were noticing different anomalies showing up on uh on the night vision cameras and stuff like that uh and just weird stuff showing up on the tv and then you have go and start researching about problems with lenses and picking up uh, different types of light and temperature outside how they picks up uh, mm -hmm. uh mist in the air that by the human eye you don't see it but it looks on the tv it looks like there's a snow a blizzard out, a blizzard outside mm -hmm. so it's just uh interesting stuff like that that you can uh look into this more and then you can look at this editing software that is out there that can add images in there with shadows and with impressions you can leave impressions behind and stuff or not impressions behind and and things and the way you can alter this stuff at such a speed because computers are getting so much faster now and uh it's just like you have to sort of wonder has this stuff been really been uh hoaxed or, fo or fake? Or I have to be fair because I have run into people. I used to do the bulk of the paranormal and there was other things that you did that we worked kind of as a team together in the last house we were in. And I have had people, I won't name this person, but they were on a show of a um, an acquaintance of mine and I used to call in every week. And I called in and they said, hey, well, give me a call and I want to hear more about your story and whatever. This is when I first was starting. This was like a full time job, 12 to sometimes 18 hours a day researching. So I happened to call them. And this is before I realized that I had the abilities that I have being a psychic and a medium and very clear audience. Oh, I don't hear voices, but I hear spirit, if you will, my my guides. And I heard in my head you should tape this phone call, this Skype call. And I remember arguing, we all do that with our inner voice, right? I'm not taping it. Why would I tape it? I wish to God I had because, and this isn't just one person. I've had a few people do things like this. He came on there. He did, wasn't, didn't know anything really about her story except what I had shared in a two-minute phone call calling in the night before to ask a question. 
Um, on top of that, he didn't see any of our photo evidence. Then he started to diagnose me, didn't even know that I'm a registered nurse, and started diagnosing me with these made up psychiatric issues. And then told me that he felt I was suffering from what he liked to call it intergalactic satellite goldfish. And sorry, dude, I'm taking that one. I'm making it into a t-shirt. So all I said to him was, there's a reason why I'm telling this story. All I said to him was, you know what? Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I need to go. And I hung up. Now I would have loved to have called everybody and said, this is what happened, but it was between him and I. He did the other thing to me. And I actually got very ostracized. There's a reason why I'm sharing this. And he went around telling everybody, you and I were making up our story, that it was fake, that we were doing it for attention. And there's been a few people along the line that do that. So I'm very ultra sensitive to call anybody out. Um, I kind of call it putting this case that we're talking about. I would put that back up. I call it on my proverbial back shelf where it sort of sits there and something will either come to light if I look into it further, either proving it to maybe be a little bit more believable or it will completely debunk it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this was uh, mentioned too, and I and I, I agree with this with uh, Joe, our uh, owner of the station, is that the best thing if you're going to have any type of photo advice, uh, yeah. proof is to have it on film, right, where you have a negative and stuff like that. Because yeah, you get the old cameras, like the portable camera. Seraphine Hurley, who's my co-host usually for Tripping the Boy, she suggested that as well. Or old-fashioned tape recorder that you're still using a cassette those kind of technology that they weren't i mean there's probably a way to manipulate it still in this day and age but it's a lot better where you can take those you can still i think buy them they're disposable cameras with film in them you snap them and then you send them in to get the um developed and they cut like you said with the negatives so they're a lot harder to fake yeah the, the only the only problem with uh i'll just say with uh audio tape though is audio tape you can re-record over top of it whereas in uh film uh with the film once it's a uh, shot with the picture it develops the no no i was talking for evps is what i was talking about because people want to use ghost boxes and all this technology when a lot can really be picked up with an old-fashioned tape recorder right yeah so that, that was just sort of uh interesting things and that's why uh that i sort of the 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 question always comes out there because this is what we do on the delicious recipe is question everything and uh, and that's the healthy way to do it, is it whether it's from your government, your doctor, uh, the person on the TV, on the news or person mm -hmm. that's even on this channel is question everything and research it yourself and look into things and how things can be sort of uh, manipulated fake or if the, the information is factually true or partially true. And that's uh, I think that's a really uh, missed uh, thing that uh, people are sort of not doing there today in uh, today's topic is they're just uh, blindly following uh, supposed uh, experts and things or so-called experts in uh, whether it is I'm saying in government uh, business uh, whatever any anything there and uh, that's uh, you should always be questioning things and uh, looking for possibilities I'm not I'm not saying that everybody that's doing things is all fake and phony or nefarious and stuff like that. But a healthy person that has a, a logical mind should be questioning things all the time. And uh, I think that's just uh, one point that I always like to make uh, make known here for what I like to do on this channel is going through stuff and looking at it a little bit more questionable, asking many questions. Did I think I, did I say questions enough? I think, I think I think I said questions about 15 times there. That's so. how important it is. No, you're right. And you know what? I was just saying this. I show was on uh, about an hour ago. And I'm going to mention that, you guys. It's called People for People. It's out of um, Scotland. They've got a great show there. Um, check it out. I think it's peopleforpeople.ning.com. Live radio. They've got some really good uh, hosts on there, good content. So make sure to check it out. It's a smaller network and uh, it's uncensored is all I'll say since we're not going to talk about that kind of stuff tonight. But uh, you'll hear some interesting information and people on there. So make sure you do check it out, please. And I want to give them a shout out because they did have me on there today with my friend Karen and then uh, another show after that. But when you said questions and questions and questions and questions, you're right, Dal. Because the reason I mentioned all this is and I must say this at least five times a day, but I said it on that show just an hour ago is I, or even before I said, um, 
I'm trying to remember, I did two things there, but my whole point is I keep saying that I think that 2020 and 2021 is actually the death of logic, common sense, and critical thinking. And not even applying to this, this situation going on globally, it's about anything. That's where I'm going with this big, long story. Never mind. You, you're saying you said questions. How, how long did it take me to say that? But my point is that you're right. Like we're not going into this with a suspicious mind, but I think it's really important to question, to check different sources. Like when you said expert, I've always had a, and I'm not saying, I'm not pointing a finger at you. What I'm saying is when someone says they're an expert, have we ever, ever really seen the criteria, which really is like globally across the board, what an expert is, right? Yeah. That's the same thing mm -hmm. as, uh, you could you could switch a uh, expert with essential. You, mm -hmm. uh, some people have uh, marked what essential is when it's, uh, <laughs> I guess it's, it's this whole varying of speech, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh is when we've talked about this many times and we'll sort of shift the direction here a little bit is uh where we see how speech has been vilified and uh certain words have been uh taking a new context from what they were originally meant and uh mm -hmm. this, this is a whole a big uh thing about putting uh things into perspective in context for when things were done what cert what what things meant a certain way it's like a lot of people I'm not saying a lot of people some people when they're doing things that will look back and phrase it, uh, what happened 50 years ago relates to situations that are happening today. And the, 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 the times and changing and verbiage of words and all that is totally different or is being changed into meaning something different. And this is a, a confusing sort of uh, process when people are uh, giving arguments on uh, and using uh, parts of speech or or taking even quotations uh, from uh, one little snippet or two lines out of uh, two paragraphs. And so you don't have the, the before and the after, the context of what is being actually. No, what we were talking about, why I was laughing. We've been discussing this lately about this new trend. Instead of saying you're a secretary, and it's not a new term, we've heard it for a while, administrative assistant or somebody that collects garbage. What are they, waste management um, something like that yeah, yeah. So, but again yeah. that's verbiage being changed because what is wrong with disowning who you are like why do you have to have this big title what it is and then most people have to say what is that and then they explain it it's like oh like you're this why, why not just say what you are you don't need to I, I don't understand what the what the premise is behind that I don't know do you uh, well, it's a it's a, a part, and this is a I get a little bit uh, back because the reason this sort of popped into my mind was I was just watching uh, uh, President Biden's uh, speech there, and uh, I guess it was from the other day or today, or, and he was talking about see we're getting on track there. We just created two hundred and seventy thousand new jobs. Okay, and this is ends up being this is like a political double speak or news mm -hmm. double speak, and. Uh, See, when I when I think about the word job, new job, it would be something that is created even when the existing stuff is. So if you had a country, we'll just we'll use the U.S. as a thing and uh, say there's a million jobs and 750 of those jobs all, all, of, a, all of a sudden stopped. OK, mm -hmm. there's only 250,000 people working. And then you go and say afterwards, you say, well, we just created. 260,000 new jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what about that 750,000 jobs that were put on? <laughs> you haven't created anything new. Yes. Right? You're, you're just restarting something you already took away. Mm -hmm. New would mean we take, we give you back those other 750, get mm -hmm. back to a million and then created 260,000 new jobs and but even with bestsellers like how many times when we've had people we've you and i've researched as we watch a lot of stuff together about what a bestseller is you want to tell them what a bestseller is or what we've heard what that is too well, yeah the, people can check this out too is that mm -hmm. uh there's uh, a process that's being done because anybody can become a new york times bestseller and mm -hmm. all it takes is a little bit of money and uh what it is is it just does about amount of books that are being sold and amount of uh, uh, stuff that's being there. So you can go and load up and this goes into this whole thing about Amazon too. I want to get to talk about there because this is crazy. This drives me nuts, but you could have 
a bunch of books you have it there projected to sell these go like this and then this the amount of books that were created and that even though they didn't sell but the store took them in or the publisher buys them publisher (laughs) buys them in this so they're they've just moved from one part to another the books haven't sold but they've been transferred over so they're accounted as being sold Mm -hmm. right that these all they haven't been purchased Mm -hmm. right so this this becomes hundred thousand books new york's times bestseller right and that's what it is the Mm -hmm. publisher buys them back from the person they sold them to and there's it's an equal exchange like you said it's not like anybody's owed any money but Mm -hmm. technically they're sold right but they're sold back to the publisher to be sold again so Mm-hmm. Hold somewhere else down the line and mm-hmm. get them in a bargain bid. And not everybody, by the way, that happens to. We're just seeing examples of this and how it was explained from actually various big authors. I forget what um, documentary we were watching. And then we looked further into this because we couldn't believe this. But it's almost like money laundering in a way. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this goes into this whole fiasco about the, the Amazon uh, uh, online buying and this is, this is what I find is crazy because there's a bunch of uh, items that uh, we purchased for Amazon and Amazon says well they're expedient and stuff like that and so Laura has an Amazon Prime uh, membership mm-hmm. account and so she always says okay because it gives you free shipping and that with and it. it's fast it's supposed to, it's supposed to be fast uh, and right now where we are I'm not trying to get into it but it's a necessity to order online as all I'll say right and so what we'll do is, well, what she gets me to do is, is order things that say Amazon Prime, right? So you get the free shipping. And some of these things will be Amazon bestsellers. Some things will say limited quantity and it'll have the little Amazon thing, bestseller, limited, Amazon Prime. Six, but in stock still, oh, no, in, in stock. stock. That's in the stock point. Or, or five left in stock. Mm-hmm. Or they just things like this, right? So there's there's other ones you can go buy that don't have the Amazon blue little tag that's on the, the mm-hmm. product price, right? So this is a, a part of marketing, getting into this. So you're going to be getting this. This goes along with your, uh, your purchasing. You're gonna, okay, this is something that Amazon's really doing. So after this long phone call that had happened last week, I think I probably talked about this last week as well. And I think two different days about this. And uh, I was upset about it going like we've ordered stuff that's been waiting for almost six weeks to eight weeks two months and these are amazon products some things were five things left in stock are no longer available but they already took our money for it or they're in stock still and they're selling it on the website now my point is and they couldn't answer this for you and i let him deal with it because as i use the exact words he was molding it correctly he wasn't getting upset he was repeating his message but these people that worked at Amazon, no matter how high up it went, could not answer this either. If you don't have it in stock, why are you still selling it? Well, why is it marked in stock? Yeah, in stock, qualifying for prime delivery with, well, for us right now with what's going on, they say two days to a week. So we're still waiting. You have no idea when it's coming. You have no idea where it might even be or when you might ever see it. Yet you're putting on your website that it's available, that you have it in stock. It's available. You're taking people's money for this. So why are you doing this? And nobody could answer this for us, right? Yeah, well, that, that was part of it. And then mm-hmm. the, the one, uh, we got further up there to this one supervisor. And uh, I think it was, I talked about it last week about this wetsuit. Mm-hmm. And they said, here you go. I'm buying this one here. Because it was all to do with the uh, credit because they screwed uh, something else up there. And then they weren't allowing this credit to be applied to this purchase. No, because they never told us <laughs> when the girl was really nice and she'd given us a credit for the. I was basically, I believe it was almost for the prime membership for two months. Right? right. But she didn't tell us that in the very tiny, tiny fine print that it could only be used for Amazon products. Amazon made products. Yeah. So besides a fire stick and uh, Amazon Echo, and you challenged this woman very kindly, very politely to find something that we could use this credit. I didn't mean to cut that in, but you had tried to use this credit towards the wetsuit. And I'll, I'll stop there. You can finish the story. Sorry. 
Yep. So then I had her on the line and uh, we'll still talk to her. And I said, well, you go and search since you're a supervisor, you can do this a lot quicker than me. You have all the codes there. You find me this wetsuit that has this exact same. It says Amazon Prime delivery, this many in stock and everything like that. This is it says Amazon. You guys have it. You find it where it is that I'll have it here in two days. Well, this has already been over a week now, and it's no. Still- but remember, she was about ten minutes, and we you had challenged her to find something that we could actually use this sixteen dollar credit on. That right. was an Amazon product only. You tried with the wetsuit; there was nothing there. She couldn't find it, but she couldn't even find a product to tell you that we could use this supposed credit on. Well, that that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's sort of the 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 crux of where that sort of ended with this. Uh, this whole point of that I'm saying about this this double speak and it's a, it's a way of marketing and manipulating words to give you something and this is another part that uh, always bugs me the most and I've mentioned this so many times about how people use percent incorrectly because <laughs> this this just drives me nuts and uh, I've even believe had, me I hear about it <laughs> like, uh, percent <laughs> means of one hundred. So percent, the number that goes in there can only be zero to 100, everything in between that. You cannot have more than 100 and you can't have less than zero. And if you can do this, I'll be amazed if I drink 100% of this drink and you're telling me you're, it's 110%, I'll finish the 100%. You go ahead and drink the last 10%. You can't do it. Or a thousand percent or yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can you can increase an original thing. Percent moves with the final category of what you're trying to explain. Like you could have fifty percent of a pie here and fifty percent of a pie here, and then at the end you have you don't have you have one hundred percent of one pie to, together claimed. Right? It moves along with stuff, and you're taking away. It only means of one hundred. I watch mainstream media news use this. Uh, they said, well. We have cases that have uh, increased by 360%. I'm going, what? They can increase by a timesing the original amount. The percent is only what the final product is. The final thing you're trying to say, it, it, percent doesn't move that same way as the way that they're using. It's the same thing as like saying, uh, we have uh, things that are marked 50% off. Okay, now mark it 300% off. Does that mean you get the product and then they give you two times the amount of what the product was paid for? Right, so you get money back plus a product. They can't. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. And but that's the way media, government. I've watched government even use percent wrong in uh, explaining things. Even with this pandemic, explaining percents and stuff like that. And the who and uh, whatever the all the rest of them, they all use it incorrectly for for a large part because what they're doing here is just like this whole part about the new jobs. Two hundred. It's it's not, it's just this double speak. And a lot of my peer people, <coughs> peer, uh, friends and that, that listen to this, they, they believe this. And they said, do you understand that it's not new or that the percentage doesn't work that way? And they they have to really think about it. Some of them just like, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that, that or happens. no, I just listen to the, whatever's on the news. I don't do any research myself. I just like whatever they're telling me. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. And that's a, that's a, I think that's a really dangerous way to live your life in a way because and we're not even referring to what's going on in the world right now. That, that was pretty well applicable to anything. And, and again, maybe it's from being with you. And I've said this because I've noticed a lot more things that I don't pay. When I, he first explained to me what he notices when he goes in a room, the words out of my mouth before I could censor it were, oh my God, it must be exhausting to live in your brain till I realized, no, your brain's always worked that way. But it rubs off on a person when you hang out with them all the time. And there's things that I now know, I go, how could I never have noticed that before? And it's the little details or the things in the background. And it's important. And the same thing is, you know, there's so much what people are saying is misinformation. They don't know who to believe. They don't know what to believe. And it does, I'm not even referring to this. I'm talking about anything. So my point is we all have a brain, right? Most of us have access to an internet or there's books or, you know, people that may have had that experience before speaking to and looking up from various avenues, 
looking up what you find, because I believe knowledge is empowering. I don't think it needs to create fear because once you understand something and know what's behind it becomes empowering, it really does. And I'm finding we're losing that art of that, of researching and taking a look at things for yourself, not what your friends are telling you, not what other people are telling you. Use your brain and see what do you think, meaning the global you. Yep. Well, that's that. This is uh, sort of the terms that like we've used here is uh, people living in their own bubble or their own sphere, right? Their own environment. They're only paying attention to what's going on. And then another part is that a lot of people run on autopilot or cruise sure. control, and they're not focused in because they're focused in on this little uh, device here because that's where they're there. They're not noticing everything else that's going on and mm -hmm. what we say to their bubble or their sphere of environment. They're only worried about what they're doing in <clears throat> their life and not noticing everything else that's going on around them. And that's uh, that was the whole another part about uh, having this chat or having this show in this channel was looking at things a lot more and and doing a lot more research into things and looking at uh, further other avenues of people that aren't being reported in these documentaries that are on these uh, national TV, national news networks and mm -hmm. uh or a government funded PBS and uh, whatever channels and, and stuff like that or sponsorships and government grant money uh, things is that uh, there's other documentaries out there of people that are doing the, the research too, that don't get this stuff that are have other parts. And that's one thing that I've noticed that there's always a, there's always not, there's no, never a consensus on anything, any topic period. There's always going to be you mean a consensus, a consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on things there's always going to be someone that's looking at this a little bit differently and you without getting that information or seeing something like there how can you base your own uh, judgment and understanding on that if you don't have all the information and that's uh, that's a another thing that's just like the alphabet soup right <laughs> you never know what what words you're going to find until you take a spoonful that's true mm -hmm. yeah so uh what what have you been uh uh, doing there for uh, year shows there with the the paranormal with these other things there like I uh, know that I'm going to be having uh, you just had uh, Paul Anthony Wallace on I'm going to be having him uh, yeah. hopefully uh, he doesn't uh, bail on me and uh, he's he on, won't bail on yeah but uh, just different things that uh, I think that looking at this uh, the paranormal we talked a little bit about that there's also been about uh, people having these channels and sightings like that and I've always sort of wondered uh with a population increase and i've looked at this too is like uh where the population is still increasing at the same rate it has mm -hmm. uh and uh for the last few years i think it's at 1.14 percent so like i think it was in the 1900s or 19 1901 i think the population of the earth was around 2 million people or 2, yeah. bi 2 billion in yeah. uh, 120 years we're up to 7.6 billion people yeah. We're at this increase that's going up, and uh, a lot of this part about spirituality and death and people dying. I wonder, uh, with us getting this many people dying, do you think that's why we're seeing so many more ghosts out there and paranormal experiences? Oh, no, no, my and this is just my thoughts, but having that conversation with spirit, as I call it collectively. And what I believe to be true is I believe, and some this is going to appeal, meaning piss off, um, maybe peop, some people hearing this, but first of all, I don't think we're here by accident. I think everybody's here for a reason. I think we've lived thousands of lives and we will continue to live them, that we come to earth to, if you will, or wherever we choose to incarnate in that lifetime uh, with a mission, if you will. Uh, we're going to set, there's going to be situations, there's going to be things that we've set out that will help our soul grow, grow, if you will, evolve life lessons. We have the choice to screw it all up. We pick our parents. We pick uh, the people that are around us. Apparently I picked you coming here, you pick me. And we've been together probably many lifetimes before. But I also believe as you become an older soul, that you don't have necessarily an easy life like and you you see that you can almost tell who's an old soul there's that saying you know people say that person's an old soul 
And you know, they've got a lot of wisdom, they've got a lot of knowledge, even they don't sometimes know where it comes from. They just, it's called clear cognizance. It's just there. But I believe as we age as a soul, if you will, that we pick more and more difficult lives with a lot more trauma, maybe a lot more, a lot more issues. And what happens, I believe we build in exit points into our lives as a soul so that we can, and, and as well, I, whether you're a new soul, an old soul or in between, I always say this, we know from the minute we were born, we, our higher self, our subconscious knows when we're going to exit too. So this is, and again, this is just my theory, but I believe that if you've got a really difficult life and you've heard this about people, some people have a near death experience. Some people have had like a horrific car crash and how do they survive it? Whatever it may be, right? That that was built into that lifetime that you, you could choose to leave. And you hear people telling stories about that. Like maybe they've been in a coma and, you know, some of their experiences that way that they remember and they wake up. My whole point of getting to the answer of this is I believe every single person that has passed from what's been going on in this lifetime, that when they leave, it's their time to go. They, it's their time. It's not like this was an accident, whether this may have been a planned exit point. Could they have lived on further? Possibly. Maybe. But I don't think any of this is an accident that we're not having all these earthbound spirits roaming around and again the other thing is when we cross over i truly believe that we have free will which means that you have the choice not to cross over into the light and i believe that that may be some of the stuff that we're seeing with earthbound if you will or ungrounded spirits mm, that's, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting theory mm -hmm. uh i'm just thinking about this uh part there that i saw with uh uh, Elon Musk and all these other technologies mm -hmm. trying to put uh, consciousness into the machine. And there's been a lot of talk about uh, putting that in there. So would you, I'll just ask you a question on this. Would you say, say consciousness and the soul are the same thing? No. So you could remove your soul and your consciousness would still be, would be separate from your soul. Okay. You could, how do I do this? They're not the same thing. But I didn't mean they were separate entities. I think that they can be one in the same. I'm going to re rephrase that one in the same, but they're not identical. It's almost like they're like the yin yang. They go one, you can't have one without the other. So they're not necessarily separate. It's a whole entity, I believe, but you need to have both. That's just my thoughts. Right. So this would come into the, the question there is putting consciousness or the, the, the human into the machine mm -hmm. would you end up trapping the soul into the machine well then it depends what you believe about the soul because as i go further down this path and the more research i do more that i learn from spirit that they say the past present and future is all happening at the same time there is no time over on the other side and then there's the theory that your soul is actually you just have a piece of your soul in this lifetime that there's the other pieces that have gone into other lifetimes i i don't know i always say i don't think we're going to know any of the answers all of them concretely until we go i call it going back home whether you want to call it crossing over dying leaving whatever you want to call it because to me if the past present and future is happening and then we get into a complicated discussion of multiple old timelines and dimensions if there because i've heard the theory that supposedly there is a version of yourself for every potential situation timeline and dimension there is and if we all have a soul is it just a piece of the soul that we have it starts getting really complicated yeah <laughs> think about it just with that the whole uh part with the uh the Marvel universe and the multi. The yeah, there universe. you go. Even that's but, complicated to think of, right? And that's fictitious supposedly. Yeah. And that was just, uh, if people, uh, followed along with the uh, Marvel comics and the Marvel universe and that, that, uh, when uh, Thanos had the, the soul <laughs> gem, the, the, the five soul gems, or was it six? I think it was six, six of them. Mm -hmm. If you, if you like, I, I, I used to, I still follow comic books and stuff like that. Is that mm -hmm. in the other, in the multiverse, each multiverse had their six, right? And they were all part, they, they were, there was the omniverse that 
that encapsulated the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And when you're watching the movies there, you're watching it on Earth, uh, was either Earth Prime or Earth 312 or 512. Yeah. Like that. But there was many other, D DC Comics did the same thing yeah. with uh, tackling this uh, multiverse um, sort of uh, dilemma, or not dilemma, or the multiverse sort of idea. And mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a lot of uh, this uh, document. Like I, I watched millions of documentaries, even science shows there that they're even mm -hmm. dealing with uh, string theory, that string theory might not actually be correct. And this is the whole part about these are theories, the best way that you can sort of understand a problem. And you got to understand that with a lot of stuff <laughs> that's involved in this high math and uh, theory mm -hmm. is that some things are they put in there, they put in values to mm -hmm. fill the void to make the equation work. work right? mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that, that's a that's a thing that happens all the time. That's why the things are called theories, right? Yeah. And if you if you listen to any scientist that's out there that is going on there says if they explain to you what a theory is it's their best guesstimation yep of how we can sort of assume that it is until something is discovered or comes along or some new knowledge is found that explains the part that we're missing this is the best way that we can explain it mm -hmm. right? it's like with gravity right that we all know that gravity exists and uh and access of force and stuff like that, but uh, how it actually uh, explain it more than that, they just, they can't explain it more than that. That's their best explanation on mm -hmm. how it is. And that's where you get all these other people talking about theories about buoyancy and uh, electrical attraction and that. But then when you move mm -hmm. the objects away from certain areas and how objects work in electrical fields, when you get quantumly small or, or or infinitesimally big or infinitely big things don't always sort of jive the same way and that's the whole that's the thing ask questions <laughs> do some reading do some research and i understand that a lot of people are busy and stuff like that that uh they don't maybe they don't even know where to look uh and i'm not saying that uh youtube is a great source for information in that but there is a lot of uh, other channels that you can find mm -hmm. on there that haven't been sort of uh taken down in that or information which you can send you to their websites where you can read their information there but it'll mm -hmm. give you a good, a good starting point to uh, go off for things what, what would you say there laura for finding information i would and again i think whether or not i hate the word conspiracy theory but i think that we need to be cognizant that we should be using more than one search engine not just the most popular out there. You'd be surprised what you find with different search engines if you want to use the internet. The other thing is there's nothing wrong with going back to a book, um, especially things that have been written, say, before we had we were in this digital age. Um, speaking to people who have experience, like you, and again, we get back to who's an expert and who's not, but if you know somebody that's worked in the field for a long time, they understood their job and what they were doing, regardless of what it applies to. But what, I guess my whole point is be creative about where you get your information and not just from one person or one source, because we have the capabilities. Yes, it might take a little time, but once you get used to being a critical thinker, questioning everything, like how you end your shows, Del, you question everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not coming from a suspicious nature, because I think that that's how we learn, right? Maybe you find something that resonates with you in your research. You follow that breadcrumb, which leads to another breadcrumb, which before you know it, you're almost in the middle of the loaf of bread, if you will. But I think that it's enriching. Again, like I said, I think knowledge is empowering. And I don't think that research um, ever, ever will steer somebody wrong when you're in the pursuit of knowledge. But again, being very creative. And that's just thinking off the top of my head. I'll bet you if you and I would get off of here, we'll be talking about, oh, yeah, we should have mentioned this or that. There's many places to get information. It's just that so many people I'm finding, and again, it's not even to this global, global situation, it's everything, are so used to being spoon-fed everything, and everything's instant, that people have forgotten that we have, I think, that we have a brain that we are able to do these types of things and we can think for ourselves.
nothing wrong with asking a colleague or a friend what their opinion is or what their thoughts are on something and having a thoughtful, peaceful discussion, hearing each other's point of view. You don't have to agree. But I, I think that that's how we learn. And we there's a lot to even be learned from just having that type of conversation or discussion with another individual. Yeah, well, that's the important thing is why I'm so uh, against uh, censorship and uh, mm -hmm. the way that uh, these social platforms have sort of done this, whether it's political or mm -hmm. whether it's just for anything. It's just opinions and ideas on something. Mm -hmm. But when, when you have somebody that's in control, whether it's uh, the platform owner or it's the government or causing restrictions for someone just to have a thought, whether they're good thoughts, bad thoughts, any thoughts, you still have a choice whether or not you want to watch and listen to it as well. But mm -hmm. also there should be all the information should be out there and for you to reasonably go through and discern yourself what, what you take in. And that's uh, the whole part about being an adult and being somebody that's, that's uh doing actually reasonably uh, uh, questioning what's going on. But mm -hmm. uh, we're almost right at our time here, Laura. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to tell them uh, where they can uh, check you out and what times? Sure, you can find me. Normally we're here on Tripping the Void. I think tonight we're going to be having a replay and I apologize. I um, haven't been able to get a hold of my co-host. She must have something going on. So everybody gets a little break tonight. So normally you can find me on Tuesday nights right after the delicious recipe with my bestie and partner in crime, Seraphine Hurley, on Tripping the Void from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central, uh, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern. Um, on a Monday nights, I have my own show called The English. Angel Rock, which airs from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central. I know that's confusing. Um, and I have great guests on there talk about all aspects of the paranormal or supernatural. I say anything from UFOs, paranormal, power of the mind, power of positive thinking, talk about energy, many of these concepts we talked about tonight. And I always have guests on there through the work that they're doing. They make a positive change for humanity and we share that work. So lastly, very quickly, I will add that you can also reach out to me on facebook.com forward slash the angel rock. You can always get a hold of me and find me on pretty well any social media platform as well. And I'm so glad I got to do this with you, Del. Thank you. Yes. And uh, you can check me out here. Same time, same back place uh, here Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. And like I said, next week, uh, talking to Paul Anthony Wallace about his uh, new book that just came out on uh, May 3rd. I believe it's Scars of Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, and just going through uh, reading the other one first before I start the new one. And uh, we'll be chatting with them next week. So take care out in the ether. Have a great night. See you next week. See you next week.